Well, my grandfather started on our farm about 100 years ago. Next year, we'll celebrate our 100th anniversary. Oh, awesome. And uh, when they first came, he farmed with horses. Yeah. And in the 20s, they started to get their first tractors. And, of course, a Dust Bowl hit in the 30s, and that was a hard time. Most of the neighbors didn't make it. About half of them were gone. Um, he was one of those survivors. And um, then after World War II, started, things started getting better. My father came back to the farm after World War II. They introduced um, uh, herbicides. Um, chemicals to the mix and um, I came back to the farm in 80 um, or 78 and uh, within 10 years I was going organic so it's quite a big uh, evolution of things that have happened on our farm. Yeah tell me about and you were not bitter obviously when your dad started mixing herbicides and what do you mean by herbicides or pesticides and stuff that kill off the bad stuff and let the good stuff grow, quote unquote. How did that happen, you know, in your best experience? You know, because now we're talking about obviously Roundup and the controversies. How'd that change? Because that wasn't always there. Well, no, it was looked at as sort of a miracle drug when 2,4-D first came out. Yes. Uh, my father and grandfather both tell me how they had to fight weeds. And they, of course, they were doing monocultures. They were, they were not rotating like we've learned to do with um, organic uh, systems and the way they've done for tens of thousands of years, but they were doing monocultures and just weed after weed after weed. And, and when the weeds you say monoculture, plant the same thing every year? Yes, yes. Correct. and the whole okay. field is not rotating with anything else. So it was wheat, sometimes barley, uh, but mostly wheat on wheat, and the wheat, summer fallow, wheat, summer fallow. In Montana, we don't have enough rain to grow crop every year, ah. so we have to have a fallow year in between our crop years. And those um, fallow years would be worked with the uh, tractors and um, cultivating so that nothing grew and just saved the water. And then the crop years, of course, the weeds would come in. And that was uh, when you had a spray that would kill only the weeds and leave the wheat alive. This is, a, this is great for them. And so here's the thing, you know, it was considered a miracle. But, and your dad, in his entire career of farming, he used that, right? Yes. Yeah. And it was accepted. I was the way, it was the way I was raised. It was normal for, us, for me because that's all I ever saw. We and nobody saw any problems with it. Your dad no, didn't think it was a problem. No, not really. And we were taught it in school. I went to um, high school, studied in Voeg, on to college in Montana State, on to graduate school, University of California at Davis. And that's, what, that's the way agriculture was going. That's what we were doing. Wow. And so then I want to fast forward, and you changed to organic. What made you change and, and sort of see the light. What were you seeing and what was, what was the, the, the light bulb that went off that made you change? Well, the thing I was seeing is that we were costing, it was costing us so much to farm and the prices for our products were so low, we couldn't really make a living um, farming in the industrial model anymore. It was expensive to use these herbicides? Of course, and, the, and uh, machinery is getting more expensive all the time. Everything, all the input costs are increasing. And yet what they called commodity prices were fluctuating and when they went down it was serious and so I was really excited to um, think about the opportunity of growing my own fertilizer for example I yeah. mean the chemical fertilizer is the other big expense besides the herbicides and using rotations to break up disease cycles weed cycles and pest cycles so I didn't need to use pesticides or herbicides this to me was I, 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 was, I was trained as a scientist and that was very interesting to me so I, I turned my whole farm really into a laboratory well but you were way ahead of your time right Hardly anybody was doing it then, right? Well, no, all my neighbors thought I'd been in California too long. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there were best at the coffee shop. Well, is he going to go broke first or is he just going to give up? And I didn't either. And uh, now some of my f friends and, and neighbors are turning organic. So to me, it's the future. It's the only way that makes sense in the future of agriculture and the future of, of eating in the world. And it's so, the only thing that can feed the world. And so a lot of people say, well, you know, if you don't use roundup or another product like that there's no way you could make it but you're showing that they've been doing this for tens of thousands of years of course speak about that because a lot of people have tried to do what you've done and and you know this as well as i do that they've not been successful they've gone broke they've actually not been able to do it i've met personally people that have tried to go organic and then went back because they couldn't they couldn't succeed how have you succeeded well as i mentioned i'm a scientist at yes. heart and so i just did a lot of experiments our we had um, opportunity for um, diversification of our farm so we had cattle also and we had um, I started a small flour mill to to direct um, sale our um, uh, high protein wheat to whole grain bakers so we had extra income that allowed me to do these experiments and we didn't change it all at once you know the thing that really aggravates me when I hear people talking about conventional agriculture compared to organic yeah well what we're in now 
is a, an organic or a chemical experiment that's only about 80 years old. Right. What's conventional is what we've been doing for 10,000 years. years. That's conventional. And this organic or this a chemical experiment now is starting to show lots of flaws and starting to come apart at the seams. And now I think we need to go back to what was traditionally conventional. And I'll tell you that that you know what what really is a driving force in my opinion for those you're watching is that it's not as profitable for big big companies to really push the true conventional, you know, because uh, the chemicals, right. you know, there's a big industry here, right? That's I mean, right. they need to keep uh, their, their, their motor running. And, and you've never used Roundup, have you? No, we converted to organic before Roundup became popular in Montana. Because it was 2,4-D before that, right? Well, right. And um, Roundup was used first in Montana to uh, substitute for um, uh, the uh, tillage of our summer fowl. And so now it's used on half the crops, half of the land, I should say, every year in Montana to, in most cases, to kill weeds and do no till, what they call no till farming, which Correct. means that you don't till the ground, but you spray it with chemicals, which is killing the soil and contaminating the whole earth. Yeah, and, 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 and here's the biggest, to me, the biggest story. Obviously, you want healthy food, but it, it does even more than that. It, it, it changes your environment dramatically. And for those you're watching, again, it's the same story again and again that, you know, you, you want to make your farm better. You want to make your, your environment locally better. But this is going uh, all over not only the United States but the whole planet. You know, we're going to come back with Bob. We're going to take a break. I know you're doing amazing things, and I want people to learn more about it. Please stay with us. We'll talk to this amazing man and talk about the future of farming, right? We're talking about the present, and he is a pioneer. We'll talk about the future and what our kids have to look forward to. That's coming up right after this break. We are feeding less than one-third of the world with Western agriculture. And research coming out of Africa and India has demonstrated that if those farmers, those peasant farmers, adopted regenerative organic techniques, they're almost there, but not some of them aren't doing soil building the way they might and rotations the way they might. Their increased yields would be two or three times. That's enough to feed the world.